Excuse me, do you know how to get to town? Yeah, it's back the way you came. With over a thousand monsters to choose from in D&D, it can be hard to know which ones to use, and even harder to know how to play them. What weapons do they favor? What tactics would they use? How do they interact with other types of monsters? These are all questions that can come up to DMs that are looking to make their combats more enticing for their players. It's certainly one that I struggled with. That's why I'm back today with another monster breakdown for D&D. Hello again everyone, I'm Bill from Alt-Roll, and today I'm going to dive into a brief history of a D&D creature, how that history was adapted into 5th edition, and how this lore can help game masters make their combat encounters better. So, whether you're here for the cool lore breakdown, or for the combat tactics, I'm hoping to give you a lot more to chew on when it comes to the monsters we face in D&D. For our 6th episode, Let's look at a moist monster that's deceptively dangerous, the Bullywug. Bullywugs have a long and varied history within D&D, being created specifically for first edition rather than being pulled from existing human mythology. In the original Fiend Folio from 1981, Bullywugs were described as a race of bipedal monsters which inhabit wet places, for bullywugs need to dampen their skins from time to time. They were used as one of the antagonists in Dwellers of the Forbidden City, and have been a low-level staple in every monster manual since. In 5th edition, bullywugs are an evil, bipedal race of frog-headed humanoids that live in swamps, damp caves, and tropical areas. Their skin colors vary from green, gray, yellow, or brown, and tend to wield crude armor and simple weapons to defend their territory. Bullywugs act as opportunistic raiders, preferring to overwhelm their opponents with sheer numbers and fleeing if their target fights back a little too well. They communicate with one another by croaking like frogs, able to spread news of intruders across an entire swamp in a matter of minutes. This method of communication allows them to bond with other amphibians like frogs and toads, of which they favor giant frogs the most. These giant frogs act as guard dogs, and the bullywugs bring them on hunting parties to swallow their captives whole and then drag them back to their lair. Bullywugs also tame giant toads, large creatures that can serve as mounts. When one is discovered, bullywugs also communicate with froghemoths, monstrous creatures as big as elephants that have four tentacles, a thick rubbery hide, a fang-filled maw with a prehensile tongue, and an extendable stalk sporting three bulbous eyes that face in different directions. Bullywugs tend to worship these monstrosities as godlike creatures, and coax them into their den so that they can worship and protect them. Their language's crudeness is also indicative of their society. Bullywug society is competitive yet insecure, with individuals having to murder their rivals in cunning ways, or find treasure to present as tribute to their liege. Since bullywugs execute those caught committing murder, the more common method of advancement is through raiding caravans and pillaging border towns to secure enough baubles to impress their leader with shiny new trinkets. Once these trinkets lose their newness, however, the king or queen becomes bored, demanding even more trinkets from their subjects. Alongside their hostile raider stance, bullywugs are also extremely territorial, and presume themselves to be the absolute rulers of the swamps. Bullywug kings and queens give themselves outlandish titles, and anyone captured trespassing in the swamp are brought before them alive. These captives must grovel before them, appealing to their vanity or presenting them with shiny trinkets in order to have their lives spared. Otherwise, they risk being fed to the giant frogs and toads that wait nearby. The only way to appease the bullywugs is to give them what they crave most of all, the fear and respect of outsiders. So, to summarize their lore, Bullywugs are opportunistic swamp raiders that capture treasure and people to try and assert themselves as a dominant threat to other races. Now that we've examined how Bullywug lore has been implemented into D&D, 
let's pivot over to their mechanics by looking at their stat block. This is what the Bullywug stat block looks like. Let's break it down section by section and look at what's listed here in detail. Starting at the top, we have their size, creature type, and alignment. Size in 5th edition defines the space a creature takes up in combat, with a medium creature taking up a 5 foot by 5 foot square or hex on a battle map. Using the 3.5 edition Dungeon Master's Guide, shown here, the Bullywug can be from 4 to 8 feet tall and weighs anywhere between 60 and 500 pounds. Their creature type is humanoid, with Bullywug in parentheses. The Bullywug subrace really only includes the Bullywug and the Bullywug Croaker, a variant of Bullywug from the Ghosts of Saltmarsh that's a bit tougher and has some unique abilities. Alignment broadly describes a creature's general outlook on the world and combines their moral beliefs with their attitudes towards society and order. The alignment of the Bullywug is neutral evil, meaning they will do whatever they can get away with without compassion or qualms. Below that top bar are the rest of the Bullywug's stats, which are essential for the mechanical play of the creature by the Dungeon Master. The Bullywug has an armor class of 15, 2d8 plus 2 hit points, or 11 on average, a movement speed of 20 feet, and a swim speed of 40 feet. One note here, that 15 armor class comes from the benefit of wearing a shield, which means if a Bullywug wields their spear in two hands, or has some other two-handed weapon, its armor class would go down to 13. Looking at their ability scores, they have 12 Strength, 12 Dexterity, 13 Constitution, 7 Intelligence, 10 Wisdom, and 7 Charisma. With 10 being average for an ability score, this means the Bullywug has a high Strength, Dexterity, and Constitution, average Wisdom, and low Intelligence and Charisma. For their skills and proficiencies, Bullywugs have a plus 3 to Stealth, a passive perception of 10, speak Bullywug, have a proficiency bonus of plus 2, have a challenge rating of 1 quarter, and award 50 experience points when killed. In terms of special abilities, the Bullywug are amphibious, can speak with frogs and toads, have swamp camouflage, and have the standing leap ability. Amphibious allows the Bullywug to breathe air and water, meaning they cannot drown. Speak with Frogs and Toads states the Bullywug can communicate simple concepts to frogs and toads when it speaks. Swamp Camouflage grants the Bullywug advantage on stealth checks made to hide in swampy terrain. Finally, Standing Leap grants the Bullywug a long jump of up to 20 feet and a high jump of up to 10 feet, with or without a running start. As for its offensive actions, the Bullywug has a bite attack, typically wields a spear, and has multi-attack that allows it to make one bite attack and one spear attack per attack action. The bite has a plus 3 to hit, a reach of 5 feet, and deals 1d4 plus 1 bludgeoning damage on a hit. The spear has a plus 3 to hit, a reach of 5 feet in melee, a throwing range of 20 feet normally and 60 feet at disadvantage, deals 1d6 plus 1 piercing damage on a hit when held with one hand or thrown, and deals 1d8 plus 1 piercing damage if used with two hands to make a melee attack. Lastly, we have their environment tags. When using digital resources, the only tag the Bullywug has is the Swamp tag, meaning they are only found in swamps, bogs, and similar biomes. Now that we've gone through and sorted out their stat block, we can begin to relate the Bullywug's lore and abilities to how we should be using them in combat encounters. Specifically, we're going to look at how they behave, how they would approach a combat situation, and how to get into the mind of a Bullywug if you want to fight effectively as one. How do we do this? 
Well, we'll take what we've already been shown in the lore and stat block of the monster and compare that with how the information is intended, referencing tactics and interpretations from The Monsters Know What They're Doing by Keith Amon, which is linked in the description. Let's start by going through Amon's key assumptions one by one and relating them to the Bullywug as we go. The first of Amon's assumptions is that most creatures want to survive, and if seriously wounded, will try to flee combat. Exceptions to this rule are fanatics or intelligent beings who believe they'll be hunted down and killed if they do flee. Seriously wounded can be subjective, but we can assume that threshold to roughly be one third of a creature's health. With an average of 11 hit points, one third of that would be rounded up to four hit points. So, if a Bullywug is reduced to four hit points or fewer, it will begin to flee combat. Next up, let's look at how their alignment can impact their thinking. On the scale of good to evil, good creatures tend to be friendly to others, whereas evil creatures are hostile to others. On the scale of lawful to chaotic, lawful monsters may try to capture or non-lethally subdue others, whereas chaotic monsters may kill them. Since Bullywugs are neutral evil, we know two major things about them. First, since they're halfway between lawful and chaotic, they have a 50-50 shot of either capturing or killing those they defeat in battle, though their lore explicitly states they would prefer to capture creatures. Secondly, since they are evil creatures, Bullywugs will be outwardly hostile to others, especially trespassers. Continuing with their mindset, let's dive into some of their mental ability scores. Bullywugs have an intelligence score of 7. With regards to intelligence, Amon states, A creature with intelligence of 7 or less operates purely from instinct. That doesn't mean it uses its features ineffectively, only that it has one preferred modus operandi and isn't going to be able to adjust if that stops working. So essentially, the average Bullywug has one strategy, and if that doesn't work, they really won't know what to do and will either keep trying that strategy or just run away from the fight. When it comes to wisdom, Bullywugs do a little better with a wisdom score of 10. With regards to wisdom, Amon states, a creature with wisdom of 8 to 11 knows when to flee but is indiscriminate in choosing targets. Knowing this, Bullywugs will not really know to target certain characters over others, instead just targeting whichever enemy is most available to them and then running away if they start losing the fight. Now that we've set up how they think, let's look at the Bullywugs' physical abilities that influence how they fight. Thinking like a Mon, we can assume the following. Creatures with high strength will focus on melee combat and won't need to compensate with greater numbers. As such, they won't need to outnumber an enemy to be willing to take a fight. Creatures with high dexterity will prefer to attack with ranged weapons, and if it's intelligent, the creature may lay traps as well. Creatures with high constitution typically have a hit point advantage over their enemies, and because of that, they're less likely to hide in combat since they can soak up a couple attacks before going down. To recap our earlier stat block examination, Bullywugs have high strength, high dexterity, and high constitution. Comparing this to the assumptions we put forward, their stats don't directly indicate a preference in combat tactics. However, their abilities and lore indicate that they prefer to attack from stealth, using ambushes and swampy terrain to gain an advantage in combat and try to force their enemies to surrender. The last major assumption we'll need to look at from the Monsters Know What They're Doing is that in D&D 5th edition, unless otherwise specified, any creature gets their full movement, one action, one bonus action, and one reaction, just like any player character does. Amon posits that any creature that exists within the game world will have evolved in accordance with this rule, and it will seek to obtain the best possible result from the action economy of the game. This means they will combine whatever movement, 
actions, bonus actions, and reactions are available to it for the best possible outcome. For the Bullywug, this just means that they will want to stick to melee combat, as their multi-attack feature gives them more attacks per round than using a ranged weapon would. Should an enemy of theirs flee outside of melee range, they can throw their spear as a last resort, but they're more likely to use their standing leap to catch back up to them, or find a nearby water source to swim through and cut off their fleeing foe. So, with all these assumptions laid out and applied to Bullywugs, what do we now know about how to use them in combat? Well, first, Bullywugs prefer to ambush enemies in swampy terrain, using their swamp camouflage and plus three stealth bonus to remain hidden until the right moment. Once an enemy gets close enough, they will leap out and begin attacking until the enemy surrenders or is defeated. Second, Despite not doing a lot of damage, Bullywugs prefer melee combat, using their multi-attack feature to get two attacks in per turn. If given a ranged weapon though, they will still be proficient with it. Third, a Bullywug fights instinctively, meaning it will attack the creature closest to it until it is no longer a threat, and then move on to the next target. It won't inherently know to target spellcasters or ranged characters first, relying instead on their overwhelming numbers to swarm every enemy with two to three Bullywugs per person. Fourth, if an individual Bullywug is reduced to four hit points, or if a group of Bullywugs are reduced to half their starting number, the Bullywug or group of Bullywugs will attempt to flee combat. Fifth, if a Bullywug wins combat, they will capture the defeated party and bring them to their den to be presented as a gift to the Bullywug king or queen. Parties defeated in this way will either have to escape through their own methods or grovel sufficiently enough to the Bullywug liege to be let go. And with that final point, we've covered everything we can regarding the Bullywug. Despite being nasty swamp raiders, I actually believe that we could use a little more when it comes to Bullywugs in D&D, as I feel they're severely underrated. Perhaps some other sub-variants would help flesh them out and keep them as interesting antagonists into later levels, such as a Bullywug Hunter, a Frog Rider, or even a stat block for the Bullywug King. What do you all think though? Do you want Wizards of the Coast to add more stat blocks for the Bullywugs, or should they stick to what they have already? If you'd like to chat about it with us, you can do so over on the Altroll Discord, which is linked in the description below. While on the server, you can pop into our courses that teach the basics of D&D, and if you like what we do, supporting us on our Ko-fi goes a long way in helping us keep Altroll going. Of course, if you're interested in more content like this, giving the video a like or a comment helps us get our videos out there for more people to see. For now, that's all I had for you today. Thank you all so much, make sure to have a great rest of your day, and I'll see all of you next time.